Hey there guys, welcome back to another video of all things Apple Plus. I wanted to give you guys just a quick tutorial today on the PP Plus, PPSSPP emulator or the PSP emulator for sure, which I think I'm gonna be calling for right now because honestly saying PPSSPP over and over and over and over again is just gonna drive me insane. So the PlayStation Portable emulator, this thing, is an amazing emulator if you guys haven't if you guys checked out my previous uh videos on the playstation emulator the playstation portable emulator you'll notice that sometimes uh and especially on newer devices the actual emulator doesn't fill the whole screen so i'm going to be showing you through app valley how to get the most updated version because this has been updated for newer devices especially for the 10 and for the 11 devices so with app valley we're going to go ahead and install their pro their actual profile for their enterprise application go ahead and hit install type in your passcode hit next go ahead and hit install and i'll make sure to leave the link for app valley in the description down below so that way you can go ahead and navigate over to there and make sure that you download their application so they have a ton of applications and a ton of paid apps a ton of emulators anything that you want from this application from this enterprise site that you can get for free so one of the uh, really cool apps that they have on here is of course that PlayStation Portable emulator. So if you are looking to try to uh, get the emulator, make sure that you navigate over to App Valley, download their application, make sure that you pull up on the menu bar or from uh, the actual screen, if you notice, the search bar and the actual like today menu bar will actually go away. I don't know if that's just an error or something on my end, but if you pull up on it, it should show too. So just go ahead and pull up on the bar, type in PPSSPP, and it's the 64-bit. This has already been um, updated on their end to make sure that it fits full screen. So it is the 64-bit version. Go ahead and install, and it will go ahead and load from there. So it's not a big, uh, it's not a big sized emulator. So it shouldn't take up that much room on your guys' devices. So now that the device, or now that the emulator is completely loaded and downloaded, we can go ahead and trust it by going down into settings going into general, scrolling all the way down into profiles and device management. I do want to show you guys real quick that I am currently on iOS 13.3 and this is working on iOS 13.3. So go ahead and trust it from general setting or from settings, general profiles and device management, and you can go ahead and launch up the application. Now, upon launching the application, you will notice that the app does fit full screen, especially for iOS or it's not iOS, but iPhone tens and 11s and 11 pros. So any of those versions of the actual, of your iDevices, the iPhone XRs, it'll fit, the ratio will fit for that. And so will the games too. So with that said, let's go in and get into how to download PSP games. So simply by just typing in PSP ISOs, we can go ahead and start searching for different ISO files or different ISO games. So let's go to free ROMs. It's usually the best place to go to get PlayStation Portable uh, games and from here let me think here it's been a minute since I played on place on my PlayStation Portable uh, I think an easy one to get would be Mega Man just because of the size of the actual file because I want to make sure I keep this tutorial a little bit uh, pretty short I don't want to download too big too big of a file so let's go ahead and download Mega Man Maverick Hunter X and if you notice the download bar it'll show within 10 seconds as you can see from here so we'll wait for the download to go ahead and finish up. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and hit direct download. And if you're, again, currently on iOS 13.1.3, you will receive that notification to go ahead and download. And then this will be saved to your files bin. So as you can see here, the game is currently downloading. Let's go ahead and check out, you know what? I'm gonna actually download another favorite of mine. Again, if you've ever been, if you've been, this is a, this is your first time to the channel, then I, I gotta tell you, I'm a huge Final Fantasy nerd. I love everything Final Fantasy. So I'm actually gonna download Dissidia Final Fantasy and see how that runs. Um, but I am downloading both of those. If you've been to the channel for a long time, you know that I'm a huge fan of the franchise, completely love everything Final Fantasy. So definitely is a must download and a, a game that I definitely have to get. So we're gonna hit that download button there. And then it does look like the game is about one point, about a, a gig in size. Mega Man Maverick Hunter is about almost 500 megabytes in size. So it's not that big, it's almost halfway done. 
And let's see here. Let's actually go ahead and skip forward. So now that both games have actually been completed and finished downloading, we can actually go ahead and use both, you know, download the zip files and unzip these folders and get our games running. So we're gonna go ahead and unzip these. It only should take about maybe, depending on the actual size of the ISO, it should only take about maybe a couple minutes. Smaller ISOs, of course, are gonna be a lot faster as they don't have to unpackage so much. So as you can see here, Mega Man Maverick Hunter X has been completed. You'll see that there has been two items, so the app will turn gray for a moment, and then it will load both files or both items. So with that said, Let's see here. All right, cool. The City of Final Fantasy completely finally loaded. And as you can see here, we do have our Ma Mega Man Maverick Hunter X file. We're going to go ahead and click on that on the actual file. And then we are going to save to files. And I'm actually going to move that to the PPSSPP folder. So any of the games I'm going to put in this folder right here, because in the main menu of the PlayStation Portable application, you will need to navigate and find these games. And the best way to do that is by putting it straight into the PPSSPP folder. And mind you, that folder was previously was actually it wasn't even previously created for me or previously made. I should say it was actually created for me once I download the application. So if you're wondering where I ended up getting these folders or how I ended up creating them, the actual emulator will create that folder for you. So scrolling out of there, let's navigate, <clears throat> let's navigate back into the PSP emulator. And as you can see here, once we hit on PSP, they, both of the games show up. There may be an ad from time to time. It's only a five second ad, so it's nothing too crazy. So we can go ahead and skip through that. All right, so before we get into the actual game, I do wanna make sure real quick that I am still recording, good deal. I do wanna navigate into settings and kinda of go over real briefly the different settings because there is a ton of things that you guys can check out on your own time. Definitely look into the different types of frame skipping that works that makes your game work a little bit better. If a game is running too slow, you can actually go ahead and change that. Maybe change a different types of the settings so that way your graphics look a little bit easier or a little bit easier on the eyes because this is uh, this is a little bit of an older device so you can smooth out different textures your audio your controls you can de you can change you can change the way that your controls look on the actual screen so when you're playing your game you can make the controls a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger again change the frame skipping under the system settings you can change and check for new versions of the PlayStation Portable emulator so really cool and if you try to real quick after saying all that if you want to try to load the game you notice that you'll your game is actually going to crash so make sure you go into tools under the settings under developer and make sure that you change what it has set under the cpu core to ir interpreter make sure again ir interpreter you want to make sure you do that under tools under the settings and under the developer section to IR interpreter that will allow your games to play because if you try to load up any game it's not the game that's crashing it's the actual emulator so make sure that you guys do change that because I've been noticing that was happening on mine so as you can see here the controls look great they're completely full screen so it is taking up the whole entire screen but we do have those black bars on the side so Real quick, before we get into the mix of having to switch that out, I do want to check out the game real fast because this is, this brings me back to custom firmware days, to loading up as many games as I could on my SanDisk memory card, and just having a blast with the PlayStation Portable emulator. Just hacking that thing was just, it was the best. And especially getting custom firmwares at the time, that was just, that was all that I was about. At, you know, this was back in my high school days, early college days. But I do want to quickly show you guys how to stretch out the actual layout of the game too. So we're going to go under graphics, under the settings, we're going to go under the display, excuse me, the display layout editor and change under options to stretching. So once you change that from stretching, hit back, hit back one more time, go ahead and hit continue. And you'll notice that the game actually does stretch and that you won't have those black bars either too. So. That's the way that you're going to be able to change this entire emulator to run full screen, no black bars. Man, but loading up this game, oh man, this this really does bring me back to old school days. Just of playing PlayStation Portable games, playing Wipeout, uh, I was playing Final Fantasy on here, especially Mega Man on here, and there was, oh, especially Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, one of the best games for this device. 
I think, personally, hands down, the best game for the PlayStation Portable device. That was a, an amazing game, and I'm just, I'm. That's another game that I'd be downloading too. So I would definitely, if you do have a, a chance, tr I'm and what I will also be doing too, and I'll be posting a previous a video on this later, is trying out the uh, wireless controllers for PlayStation and for Xbox and trying to use them on this emulator and see how well it works with the emulator. So stay tuned for that. I'll be making a video of that very shortly, but the game runs perfectly. It's a little bit hard, I gotta admit, to hit the jump button and to fire at the same time. So if you are playing action games, I would recommend uh, either a third party Bluetooth controller or you know a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller. Uh, that should work and that should get you going to so you can save states load states the game the actual emulator has everything that you would need on there and i really do recommend getting this em this emulator if you guys have the moment and get the chance from app valley but i hope you guys did like this video if you guys did please like comment subscribe share this video around let me know what your guys' favorite playstation portable game is in the comment section down below and i'll be catching you guys on the next one peace